Hey everyone and welcome back to another video on WP Games. In this video I'm going to try benchmark performances between an Apache based WordPress container and an Nginx Alpine based WordPress container. Uh, there's a disclaimer, uh, it's not a very perfect environment to run ben benchmark because I'm running this on my personal computer. I'm trying to simulate it as much as a real cloud based droplet or a cloud uh, server but the actual results might slightly differ uh, depending on the underlying hardware that your cloud provider is using. So another disclaimer uh, for this video is that there is no caching or optimization or anything. The containers are in their original state and they are in the state as WordPress officially provides them on Docker. So first things first, I'm going to tweak my Docker to create a virtual machine which simulates an actual virtual server. I'm going to only provide one CPU, two gigs of memory and a 512 MB swap. So the Docker is restarting. All right. And now that the Docker setup is taken care of, let's quickly go through our uh, Docker compose file. So what I have here is a database container, which is going to be a common uh, container for both, both the types of hosts, an Apache based WordPress container, which is going to serve WordPress on port 8000, and then an FPM based WordPress container, which is going to manage the PHP processes and serve it to Nginx or port 9000, and then an actual Nginx image, which is based on Alpine Linux. And this will be served on port 8001. And then I made a slight change in my WP config because I originally installed WordPress on localhost port 8000. Regardless of what URL I reach that website to, it will try to redirect me back to port 8000. So in, in case of Nginx, we don't want that to redirect back to 8000. So I'm just defining the website URL with a port 8001 using these four lines of code. Although this also adds adds a few microseconds of PHP processing. But yeah, like I mentioned, this is not a perfect uh, benchmark. It's just to get an idea on how, how different these setups are. All right, enough of the configuration. Uh, let's start the containers. Docker compose up hyphen D. So the containers are probably up and running. Yeah, there we go. We've got four containers running at the moment. Let's first test nginx based setup. So in this case, I don't, I do not need to run this container over here. So I'm going to stop it. And this is my nginx based WordPress website. Let's quickly double check if it is indeed being served by nginx. There we go. And now to benchmark, I'm going to use this really nice tool called Apache Benchmark. So what this tool does is it simulates requests to the website and it helps us perform various kinds of requests. For example, I can send n number of requests to the website and I can also send them concurrently and make it look like the, the visitors are, are visiting the website together at the same time. And there are a lot of other things I can perform, but for now I will just use keep alive and these two uh, parameters. So I will simply write ab.exe and n is the number of requests. Concurrency is the number of requests that are pushed simultaneously. k is http keep alive and the actual website. In our case it is http colon slash slash localhost port 8001. Oh yeah, the URL needs to end in the slash. So that was it. Now let's quickly read what the data says. I will also share a better presentation of this data. But we made 100 requests, 
none of them failed. This is the amount of data that has been transferred and this is the time it took for this is requests per second so the server is able to handle about 36 requests in a second and the average uh, time it takes to serve one request is 137 ms and this is across concurrent uh, requests and this is the transfer rate and the important part is here this is the percentage request served within time another term for this is percentile so the percentiles, one of the critical things to look here is the 90th percentile, which is 186 ms. So what this actually means that for 90% of the visitors on the website, or for 90% of the requests, were served in less than 186 uh, ms. Uh, this is more important than any other metric I would actually care, because this shows how the website looks for, for most of the visitors or how, how fast the website loads for most of the visitors. So whether it's P90 or P95, that's what we need to care about. But if you're really critical about your website, then P99 is what you need to care about. Uh, I'm gonna change this um, test to make it slightly more intensive. Let's make the number of requests to uh, 1000. So we really got a huge influx of visitors. Maybe your website got on the front page of Reddit or something. And then you have at least 25 visitors coming to your website concurrently. Although the Reddit effect is much more intense than this, but let's try. There we go. Let's take a, take a look at the results. 1000 requests completed, zero failed, which is excellent. Not very realistic. Time per request is 28 for, for all requests, but the time for a single request is 701 ms. So now, now let's take a look at the difference between the previous results and the, and, and the current results. Since we have we are requesting 25 requests, there is a lot for the server to compute. And that's why the P90 in this case is 745 uh, ms instead of 100 and 186 in our last case. So when I get a lot of visitors, let's say when I get 25 visitors coming to my website all together, then this is the time it's going to take to serve each individual page. I need to add an another point here is that this is only the core HTML request, but your website is not this request alone. For example, when I take when I when I take a normal default install of WordPress, it is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight requests that, that, that are taking place. Whereas what we are benchmarking is just the first request alone, which here shows 49. So this 49 microseconds here is turning to 745 five microseconds when 25 people are showing up but when you include all of this together and if you're loading all of this with without from an external source like CDN then all of them add up very quickly and, and your website gets really slow very fast but we are not gonna go in detail about how to optimize that that's something for a different video we are just curious about the core raw performance of, uh, of a docker container and yeah we only care about that that's pretty much so the numbers for nginx are here now let's take a look at the numbers for um, apache so i need to quickly start the apache container now and then I can shut down the other two containers, which are the Nginx Alpine and the FPM Alpine. All right, and this is my Apache container running WordPress, which is serving it in a 2000, yeah, 47 MS. Now let's try to rerun our tests, and we are going to change the port to 8000. All right, the results are there, and the P90 in, in this case is 174 ms. Comparing that to Nginx, in which case our P90 for the first set of tests was 186. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, run the same requests, uh, run the same tests with 
higher number of requests and how see how nginx performs with, with a higher load there we go so this again seems to be significantly slower i think let's compare it to apache the p90 for the same number of requests for an apache uh, container was 745 in this case it is 953 to be honest i'm new to this admin stuff so if you have suggestions or if you think there's something going completely wrong in my in my tests please write a comment below and help me figure that out but so far this is how it seems to be with the default uh, setups that i tried so that's pretty much it for this video uh, if you enjoyed the video uh, hit the like button and if you want to learn more about wordpress talker front end and, and all of these together then make sure to subscribe to this channel um, i'm going to take these changes live and, and do a lot of experimenting with wordpress so stay tuned i'll see you in the next video